Empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. October 4th. The vision and the reality. To those who call to be saints. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2. Thank God for being able to see all that you have not yet been. You have had the vision, but you are not yet to the reality of it by any means. It is when we are in the valley where we prove whether we will be the choice ones that most of us turn back. We are not quite prepared for the bumps and bruises that must come if we are going to be turned into the shape of the vision. We have seen what we are not and what God wants us to be. But are we willing to be battered into the shape of the vision to be used by God? The beating will always come in the most common everyday ways and through common everyday people. There are times when we do know what God's purpose is, whether we will let the vision be turned into actual character depends on us, not on God. If we prefer to relax on the mountaintop, and live in the memory of the vision, then we will be of no real use in the ordinary things of which human life is made. We have to learn to live in reliance upon what we saw in the vision, not simply live in ecstatic delight and conscious reflection upon God. This means living the realities of our lives in the light of the vision until the truth of the vision is actually realized in us. Every bit of our training is in that direction. Learn to thank God for making His demands known. Our little I am always sulks and pouts when God says do. Let your little I am be shriveled up in God's wrath and indignation. I am who I am has sent me to you. Exodus 3.14 He must dominate. Isn't it piercing to realize that God not only knows where we live, but also knows the gutters into which we crawl. He will hunt us down as fast as a flash of lightning. No human being knows human beings as God does. Wow, what a simple word. Empower me. Wow. Lord, give me wisdom over all of my wounds. Father, today I think on what you just said. God will hunt us down as fast as a flash of lightning. Because he knows us. He knows you. He knows me. He said no human being knows a human being as God does. God said. He said to Moses. When Moses was like, who are you? He says, I am that I am and go tell them that I am has sent me to you 
today we're talking about the vision and the reality of I am. I thank God for being able to see, being able to hear, being able to give God thanks for who he has revealed himself to be to me. Has he revealed himself to you as anything? Exodus 3.14 said, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, You shall say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Has God sent you unto anyone? Has God shown who you are to anyone? This scripture says God had revealed himself to Adam, to Enoch, to Noah, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to many other people before Moses had his historic meeting with the God of Israel at Mount Sinai. To Adam, he was the triune creator, Elohim. To Hagar, he was the God who sees me. Abraham discovered him to be the everlasting God and his gracious provider. While he unveiled himself to Jacob as God, the God of Israel. Moses knew all about the God of his forefathers and his promise to release his people from their 400-year bondage in Egypt. But in his fleshly enthusiasm, he tried to do God's work in his own strength. Have you ever tried to do the work of the Lord in your own strength? So many of us try to do it because you feel that brain tells you that you know how to do it and you begin to work in the strength of your own flesh instead of in the strength of god this rendered moses a 40 year long wait in the wilderness to be ready for that deeper revelation of his god 40 years because he was doing it in his own strength. How many of you have been waiting many years to get to the victory, to get to what God has told you to do, to get where God has told you to go in your own strength? You started off as a young person and now you're older. But Moses waited 40 years because he was trying his best to do things in his own ability, with his own knowledge, and with his own strength. That's how long he had to wait out in the wilderness. So many people are talking about, I'm on a wilderness experience. And you might be because you're not getting any answers. You're not seeing any breakthroughs. Everything around you seems dry and unfruitful. But you still love God. It doesn't mean you don't love God. You still love God and you're still running around doing stuff on your own without having the deeper revelation from the Lord. Who's on here? My friends, my family, my co-workers, my loved ones. Working in your own ability without the anointing of the Holy One assisting you is a dead end. You will work yourself to death and never have accomplished what God wanted you to accomplish in the first place. Having the vision of where God wants you to go is not that difficult. When you begin to dive into the deeper things of the Lord, begin to Move in his spirit. Stop looking around to see who else is going with you. Sometimes you have to go alone. Sometimes you got to get in your car and get to the destination where God has told you to go. He's enough for you to make it. How many of you know that God 
God is enough. He's enough for you all by yourself. Forty years. Forty years in the wilderness just to get ready for that deeper revelation of his God. He knew instantaneously that this was the God of Israel in the midst of the burning bush. But as his representative to God's people, Moses wanted to know God's character and his attributes. And so he asked God, what is your name? Who are you, in other words? I don't know you. When you meet somebody and they're different, you want to know, who is that? What is your name? Where do you come from? He was in the burning bush when Moses came up on him and said, Who are you? What is your name? And in the most profound yet simple way, Moses was to find his answer. I am who I am. And then he was further instructed, say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So many of you have been given your instruction, but you want to make it sound better than what you got from the Lord. I am who I am. In the simplest of phrases, God had disclosed to Moses that as the self-existing God, he was all his people would ever need. God is all we need. In disclosing this astonishing name to his servant, God was telling Moses that he could be depended on to fulfill every requirement of his people Israel for his faithfulness to never ending and his mercy endures one generation to the next. God continued for centuries to unveil his name, his character, and his attributes to his people Israel who were to discover the Lord to be what? Their banner, their healer, their peace, their shepherd, their rock, their redeemer, and their king. But eventually God gave the greatest revelation of himself through the person and work of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ our Lord. His greatest work and greatest revelation was Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus would continue on to reveal to his people Israel and to his church in this dispensation that he is who he is. God said I am that I am and Jesus is he is who he is. And that he is everything we will ever need in this life. And in the ages to come, Jesus completed God's gracious revelation to mankind in many different ways. But perhaps the most memorable ways that Christ unveiled God's name, God's character, and God's attributes was when he said, I am the good shepherd. This is Jesus talking now. He said, I am the good shepherd. I am the vine. Woo, God. Uh, I am the door. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection. I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father 
but by me. Jesus just did a slam dunk on the I am. God said, I am that I am. And he just went on to conclude that I am all these other things as well. Christ is fully God and fully man. And in him, we have all we need for life and godliness. Let us walk in the light as he is in the light and learn of him more and more with every passing day. Father, I want to know you. Father, I want you to develop your character in me. Father, help my flaws and my shortcomings. Help my mind. Give me strength to rely upon your strength so I don't operate in my own strength. Father, I thank you today for your family that's on this line because they love you today, Lord. Let them hear that you are their healer. Lord, let them hear that you are their peace. Lord, let them hear that you are their shepherd and their rock. Oh, God, the Redeemer and King. There is no condition. There is no sin. There is no sorrow. Then the Lord our God. Say, I'm the shepherd. I'll guide you. He says, I am the open door. You can walk through the door. I am the bread of life. He says, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Father today, thank you that you are all I have ever needed. All I will ever need in the days to come. And all I need today. Lord, let me rest my soul in you and trust in your unfailing promises. Father, both to your people, you said to Israel and to the church, which is your body, you alone are worthy of all my praise and thanks forever and ever. Lord, I thank you for your vision and for your reality to be called one of your saints to be called one of yours that loves you beyond words Father I know that you see us and you know how often we've been bruised and battered but we thank you every day that you're trying to bring us to a level to where we can walk upon the enemy and tread upon serpents and scorpions as your word said and nothing shall by any means harm me father i thank you that you are life and you are light I thank you that you are all that we need today. Father, I thank you for this simple word. Wisdom over all of our wounds. If you don't know who God is today, after I just broke that thing down to you, you need to listen to this again. And you need to do some studying to find out where God says he's all of these things to all of us. An unfailing God. An unending God. An overspreading God. He says, I want you to be overcomers. Overtake everything that the enemy tried to take from you. Go take it back in the name of Jesus. Be a conqueror. He says, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Never look back. Never look back. Never give up. The word of God says, if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you are unworthy of the kingdom. 
if you've already done that and you feel that you've made the biggest mistake of your life, the one thing that you have to be assured of is that God will forgive you. Hear me again today. God will forgive you. He didn't say if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you can never be forgiven. He said, you're unworthy. Let us pick up the plow again and move forward. Move forward. We have perfect examples in the word. When Peter denied Jesus, Jesus already knew he was going to do it. He said before the rooster crows three times, two times, you're going to deny me three times. And, he and Peter hollered out, oh, Lord, no, 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 not me. Not me. I'm not going to do that. When the rooster crowed one time, Peter had already denied him. Then came the opportunity to curse and swear and say, I don't know him. I don't sound like the Nazarene. He just began to do all that talk. And the rooster crowed a second time. He had already denied knowing Jesus to save his life. The word of God says, he who tries to save his life shall lose it. Father, I thank you that we render our lives into your hand today. Right now, we ask for forgiveness. Peter was so overwhelmed that he just ran away and did not consider himself to even be a disciple anymore. Even after going up on the Mount of Transfiguration and standing there in the presence of God, he still messed up. God will forgive you when you mess up. Who are you I'm talking to? If you mess up, just straighten that stuff out. Go to people that you're hurting. Repent and say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. And if they don't receive you, the word of God said, shake off the dust and keep going. Walk in the power of God. Walk in the anointing of God. Let God take the shackles off of your eyes and open up your vision. Let him open up your vision that you might see what God has in store for you. We always see that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not even entered into the hearts of man the thing that God has in store for you. God has something beautiful in store for your life. Lord, make me beautiful. Lord, make me be one of your vessels, a holy vessel fit for honor. And we give you glory and we give you praise today. I thank you, Father, for the brokenhearted, for the depressed today, that they are being set free, even as the word is coming to them today. Be set free. Be whole. Be delivered. Let the anointing of God pour out over you as never before. And surely people will look back and say, who is that person? For well, they have changed into a saint of God. They've changed into one who have allowed God to take them to the deeper levels. Right now, Lord, I ask you to give my friends, family, loved ones, and co-workers wisdom over all of their wisdom. Empower us today, Lord. Give us strength to walk up on the water 
So as I always tell you, I didn't come here to make you laugh, holler, shout, or dance. I came here to give you a simple word that God gave me to give to you today. Receive it today. Let that word bless you. Go back and study some of those things that I shared. I study real hard and pray that God will give me something that will bless the people. If it blesses you, send me an emoji, happy face, thumbs up, or whatever. You can email me, send me a testimony. Most of the time I do answer, I try to respond. If I don't, you know I got busy, but I will look you up. But thank you for coming on. If you like, click subscribe and share so that it might bless someone else. We are on most podcast channels. You can find us under Empower Me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. And again, I say, let God be with you today. Walk in the I am's of God. And the I am's of Jesus Christ our Lord. Go with God today. This is Sister Barbara. Be blessed of the Lord. And walk in victory. Have a great day. Bye-bye.